Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be trying something completely new. We are going to be making homemade candles. So candles are something that I've always wanted to learn how to make. I love candles. I already had some of the ingredients that you needed because I make freshies. So that just kind of pushed me into the decision to go ahead and attempt to make my own candles for my own home, for gifts, for family, for friends. So without further ado, if you are curious to see how I made these, keep watching. All right guys, so for this craft, you are going to need quite a few things. So this is just a regular pot in my kitchen that I normally cook with, but I'm just boiling some water in it, so I'm just using that. Um, my melting pot that the wax goes in. Something to stir with you can use. You know, this is just a piece of a dowel rod from another craft, um, but if you have a designated tool to mix with, like for your crafting stuff, then that will work. Any decorations that you want for your candles or just extra things. So this is not necessary, but I just wanted to put these on the tops of my candles. You're also going to need some wicks for your candles. They have a ton of different types. I just chose these basic wax wicks. And then you're also going to need something to center your wick on your candle as the candle is curing. So they have these like little metal holders that you can use, but I just took some popsicle sticks and drilled holes wide enough for the wicks to fit through. So I just kind of cheaped out there and made my own. And you'll also need whatever wax you prefer. So I am using paraffin wax beads because out of all my research, I kind of just came to the conclusion that these will have the best fragrance for the candles. They hold the fragrance better. They're just much stronger and it's like the most basic, easy wax to work with. Um, you can also use soy wax as another really popular one for a more natural alternative, but there are a ton of different waxes out there that you can use. So you're also going to need whatever you're coloring your wax with. So they make um, shards that you can put in your wax and melt, or you can just use, you know, mica pigment powder or whatever. You're also going to need some fragrance oil. As you can see, I'm using two different types today. This one I got from Lone Star Candle Supplies, and this one I got from CandleScience.com. Um, both great companies. I really like their fragrance oils. I already had these because I make freshies with these fragrance oils and the micro pigment powders. So that was just one less thing that I had to buy. So that was nice. You're also going to need whatever jars and containers that you're using to pour your wax in for your candles. So I recently bought all of these at Hobby Lobby. They were having a big sale on this stuff. So I got all these 50% off. And then another super important thing that you're going to need in this craft is a thermometer. Don't skip this. It's very important that you use a thermometer when making your candles. And now we're ready to start making these candles. Okay, so I've added some water to my pot here and I have my heat on medium high and I'm just going to boil this water. And then we're gonna take our melting pot and put the wax in it and then put it in the pot so that the wax can completely melt down. So while this is boiling, I'm going to go ahead and put my wicks inside all of my jars. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that now. So you could buy these little sticky tabs that they make for these little wicks to go down in your jars, but I'm just going to be hot gluing mine because it's my first time making them and I don't even know if these candles are gonna turn out. So I'm just going to hot glue these to the bottoms of my jars and containers. And you just kind of eye it and make sure you're getting it centered in the jar. And I'm just going to take my little wick holder that I have here and I'm just pressing down on this so that it is all the way flat on my jar. So now that this one's ready, I can just put the wick through my little wick holder. And we're just gonna leave this on here until our candle is completely done curing. All right, so we have all of our wicks in place. Now let's go pour our wax beads 
into our melting pot and start melting the wax down. So now we are ready to weigh out our beads and I watched a ton of tutorials, you guys, and everyone had a different measurement they went by. So I'm just gonna try this one that was kind of around everyone's measurements and I'll let you guys know how these turn out. Like I said before, this is my first time making candles, so I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just going by what I've seen in other tutorials. So the general ratio is for every one pound of wax that you use, you're going to use one ounce of fragrance oil. So we're gonna try this measurement and hope for the best. So I have my melting pot on my scale and I'm going to make sure that it's zeroed out so that it's not including the weight of the melting pot. And then I'm going to pour in one pound of beads. All right, so we are at exactly one pound. So now I'm gonna go put this in our boiling water and melt this down. So as you can see, our water is boiling nicely. So now I'm just going to put my melting pot in. And I always just leave the handle um, over the edge of the pot there so you can grab it. Okay, so our wax is completely melted. So we are going to remove it from the water. I'm gonna dry the bottom of it here. And we're gonna go put it closer to where we're gonna be pouring our candles. So now I'm going to let this cool a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna check the temperature of our melted wax. And you kinda of wanna pay attention to what the bag of wax says. So on mine, it said that the melting point was 130 but the temperature of my wax was actually 180 when it was all melted. So I'm just letting it cool. I just keep checking it. Right now it's at 165. I'm gonna wait until it gets to 130 to add in my fragrance oil. You don't wanna add your fragrance oil in when it's still super, super hot because it will just burn right through the fragrance and your fragrance will be very weak. Okay, so while we are waiting on our wax to cool, I'm gonna go ahead and pour in my mica pigment powder. All right, so let's stir this up and see what it looks like. And you wanna make sure that you stir up your coloring, whatever type you're using really well so now let's check our temp all right so we are at 134 so that's pretty close to 130 by the time we get our fragrance oil poured out it will probably be that so let's go ahead and pour our fragrance oil in and like I said before I'm just kind of doing a like general rule of thumb, kind of the median of everything that I research. I'm doing one ounce of fragrance oil to one pound of wax. The scent I'm using today is pink sugar. And as always, I will link all of my supplies in my description for you. So I heard that you can add a little bit more than one ounce of fragrance oil if it's a fragrance that's kind of weak or not strong to begin with, or if you're using like essential oil instead of fragrance oil, which is not as like concentrated and potent as fragrance oil, but you do have to be careful. If you do add any extra, it needs to be very minimal because it can change the consistency of your candle and how it cures. So you just wanna stir up the fragrance really well so that it's all mixed in completely. Okay, and then once your wax is about 120 to 130 degrees, it is safe to pour it into your jars. All right, so we are ready to pour our wax into our jars and containers over here. So I'm just gonna pour this into my jars. 
and you want to try to go as slow as you can so that you don't create any big bubbles or air pockets. And I'm going to fill it up to about there. Okay, and then while your wax is still melted, if you want to add anything on tops of your candles, now is the time to do that. All right, so that one pound of beads only filled these three jars, not all four that I had planned, but that's okay. This was a good experiment to figure that out for future reference. So like I said before, these need to set for two to three days to completely cure, but as you can see, the tops are already starting to harden. So we're just gonna leave them setting here and I'll show you guys what they look like in a couple days. All right, so it's only been 24 hours. Our candles are not yet cured, but I just wanted to show you guys what happened. So it looks like they sunk like in the middle and they have like these craters in them now. But I just wanted to show you this so I could try to help you guys avoid it. So I think what I'm gonna do is maybe take my um, heat gun and hold it kind of far away and just like let it melt the top and see if I can get it to kind of flatten again. I don't know if that's gonna work, but let's see. All right, so I have my um, heat gun plugged in, ready to go. So like I said, I'm gonna hold this kind of far away and see if I can just melt the top and see. All right, so I think that's good. So my thought process was if I hold the heat gun to it, it's just gonna melt that top layer to get it even again, and it's not going to heat up the rest of this. So my hope is that the rest of the wax down here is kind of like solidified and it can hold up this melted layer. So I think what I'm gonna try to do is heat up maybe just a little more wax and try to get it um, as close as I can to this color and then just pour it straight into the candle um, and fill up that crater. So I have my wax here and I'm just going to pour slowly in candle. Okay, and while our wax is still wet and hasn't cured on the top, I'm gonna add just a few more petals since some of them kind of sunk down when we poured more wax over it. Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna leave this setting for another 24 hours and then I'll show you guys if that worked or not. Okay guys, so it has been two days. Um, they were not done curing after just 24 hours. So it's been 48 hours and this is how they look. So I don't think these came out too bad for my first time. So now all you have to do is just remove your little wick holders and then cut down your wicks. So I just wanted to show you guys the comparison. They did um, start to kind of cave in just a tiny bit. I don't think it's too bad. I'm not you know, trying to sell these or anything. I'm just making them for my house or as gifts. So I think these are fine. But this is the candle that we used the heat press on and melted that first layer. These are the ones that we poured the additional wax on top of and they also sunk in just a tiny bit, but that is okay with me. But overall, I'm super excited that I learned how to make these. I think I will get better the more I make. So yeah, that's how you make homemade candles. These will be perfect around my house. They'll save me a little bit of money at Bath and Body Works. 
and these can also make great gifts for people. So I'm super excited that I learned how to make these. All right, guys, I hope you learned something from this video. If you have any questions or comments, just drop a comment down below. If you like this video, please let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and don't forget to click that subscribe button below so you don't miss out on any other crafting tutorials.